Hello, my name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N R Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 168. Page 168 and today is our lesson number 121. Please turn to it. Problem number 114 is what we're going to do. In problem number 114, we are told that we had an unemployment rate of 16% on September 1st of 92. They, they, all, they go on to tell us that they have, we, have an un, we had an unemployment rate of 9% on September 1st of 96. The September 1st part here is the September 1st part is here for one and only one reason, which is to annoy you. Just ignore it. It plays no role in it. It's just 92 and 96. We are further told that the number of workers has gone up by 20%. The question simply is, what was the percentage change in the number of unemployed workers? So let's do it, shall we? So here's the situation. Here's the here's the September 1st of 92. Here's the September 1st of 96. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start out with some total number of workers. We're just going to make up a number for total number of workers so we can calculate the percent changes. Since this problem is dealing with the concept of percentage, a good number to use, a good number to plug in, the good number to start out with as our, as our, as our base, as our point of reference, is 100. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pretend that we had exactly 100 workers. We had exactly 100 workers on September 1st of 92. And then they go and they tell us the number of workers number of workers has gone up by 20 percent. Well, if, it, if the number of workers has gone up by 20 percent, and if we are assuming that we had a 100, we had 100 workers in 92, we have 120 workers in 96. Let's figure out how many of these are unemployed. Here's the number of unemployed. Number of unemployed. Since they tell us that there are 16 persons were unemployed, 16 percent, not, not 16 uh, as an absolute amount, but 16 percent were unemployed in 92. But since we are using the total number of work, total number of workers is 100, 16 percent of 100 is just 16, which was the whole bloody point of using 100. There was a reason why we didn't use 350, so that we don't have to do any calculation. Now we have to figure out the unemployment rate in 96, we are told, is 9 percent. Now we have to figure out what is 9% of 120. Let's do it here. We know that 10% of 120 is 12. That's simple enough. 10% of 120 is 12. It's just 1 tenth of 12. Just drop a zero. Therefore, therefore 9% of 112 is going to be approximately 11. That's all. That's how simple it is. There you go. So now we see that there has been a drop of, there has been a drop of 5 in the number of unemployed, a drop of 5. The reason we emphasize the word drop here is because any answer choice, since they're talking about, since they're asking about a percentage change, any answer choice that mentions the word increase or rise or something to that effect is the wrong answer. Let's take a look at how they, are, how they present the answer choices. I should turn to page 168 myself page 168 but there you go they don't say drop they say decrease we're looking for a decrease so if there is any answer to us that mentions the word increase it's the wrong answer which means we can rule out D and E answer to us D and E are gone so now the question is we have a drop of 5 the question is 5 is what percent of 16 because 16 is what we started out with 5 is what percentage of 16 well we know that 5 is a third of 15. 5 is a third of 15, which is 33 percent. Therefore, 5 out of 16 is going to be approximately 30 percent. In other words, we're looking for something close to 33 percent. We're looking for, first of all, we're looking for a drop, and we're looking for a drop of little under 30 percent, because instead of dividing by 15, we're dividing it by 16, which is a bigger denominator. Therefore, it's not going to be 33, but it's going to be pretty damn close to 33 something little under 33 percent. In other words, something around 30 percent. The only answer choice that shows us a drop of uh, 30 percent is answer choice B. 
I was going to say a little close, I was going to say something close to 30%, but they, they don't give us an answer to why something close to 30%, they say exactly 30%. So that's what it is, it's a drop of, it's, it's not exactly, it's not, it's not a drop of exactly 30%, it's a drop of approximately 30% because they use the word approximate in the problem. They say somewhere, there you go, what is the approximate percentage change, you see? Answer is B. Answer is B. Do you feel like doing one more? You want to do one more? Let's do one more, shall we? Number 115. In 115, they tell us that we had a profit of 3 million. 3 million on first 20 million. Then we had 9 million on the next 108 million dollar. The question is, by approximately, you see there is that word again approximately, you must pay attention to that word if it appears in a problem because that means you don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to waste your time, your precious second trying to figure out the exact bloody thing, they're not looking for the exact thing. By approximately, what percentage did the ratio of royalties to sales Drop. So these are not profit as I referred to them earlier, the 3 million and 108 million, these are not profit, these are, these are royalties, same thing, I'm going to use the word profit. So the question is how much did this uh, ratio drop by what percentage? Well, here's the thing, there's a quick and dirty way of doing this problem, I'm going to explain to you in a second here. You see in the beginning we had 3 million on 20 million, 3 million on 20 million, and then it goes up to 9 million, a 9 million A 9 million, because it is 3 times the amount, 9 million on 60 million would have kept the ratio exactly the same. But it's not 9 million on 60 million. We have, so 9 million on 60 million would have kept the ratio same. 9 million on 120 million would have cut our ratio into half. If they had a 9 million dollar profit, on a sales of 120 million and if they were asking us what is the drop in this ratio the answer would have been exactly 50 percent because it would have cut the rate of profit into half I'm, I know I'm calling it rate of profit you want to call it royalty doesn't really matter that ratio would have been cut in half it is not 120 million it is 108 million which is very close to 120 as a matter of fact it's exactly 12 below 120 which means the ratio has been cut in half, well not exactly in half, but something very close to it. It has been drop of about 50%. That's the answer, a drop of about 50%. Let's see what we can do with that, that insight by looking at the answer choices at this point before we, before we actually go to the bother of solving it. We're looking for a drop of about 50%. But there you go. Now, when we say about 50%, is it, is it more than 50%? Is it, is it a little bit, are we overestimating or are we underestimating? When we say a drop of about 50%, we are overestimating because 50% would have been 120. They are making this much profit on only 108, which means their profit is cut in half, but not quite half. It's little under 50%. The only answer choice that I see that is little under 50% is C. That's it. That's your answer. We are done. But if you like, we can go through the entire process and actually do the work if, if you insist on it. So let's do the work. So here's the initial ratio. And here is the final. The initial ratio is 3 over 20. The final is 9 over 108. Now here's the deal. Instead of figuring out this ratio in terms of uh, decimal, instead of figuring out this in terms of decimal, and then trying to figure out the percentage change from that decimal to that decimal, which is going to be a pure hell, the simplest and the easiest thing here would be to somehow make this denominator the same. 
if these denominators are the same, then whatever the percentage change that is taking place will be due to the change by due to the due to the virtue of change, due to the virtue of this redundant, will be due to the change whatever that we have on the top in the numerator. You understand? One more time, if we can somehow make the denominator the same, that whatever change, whatever percentage change that is there, would be by the virtue of the change in the numerator, whatever the change in the numerator is. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make the denominator the same somehow. For example, let me give you a simple example to make you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, watch this. For example, 5 over 10 versus 10 over 10. What's the percentage change? 5 over 10, 5 over, or rather, I, I, that's, that's not what I meant to say here. Let's do it here. 1 half to 1. Is it, let me think, what, how do I want to present it? One half to just give me a second. Let me see if I can actually do a better job than that. From one half to one, from one half to one. Okay, listen carefully. What's the percentage change here? We, if you go from half to one, we have doubled it. Going from half to one, we have doubled the quantity. And if you double something, it's a hundred percent increase. Another way we could have, we could have analyzed this thing is somehow make this denominator the same as this denominator by multiplying it by top and bottom by two. So of course, one is same as two over two. And now, since the denominators are the same, denominators are the same, we can immediately see that we are going from 1 to 2. A 1 to 2 is the doubling it. If you double something, it's an increase of 100%. Do you understand? I know it wasn't a very good example, but that's all I can think of right now. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do here. How can we make the denominator the same? The very first thing I want to do is get rid of this 9 here, let's reduce it a little bit, because I can, we can see here, let's reduce it. How many 9's in a 10? 10 has one 9. Remaining one goes and joins the 18. And how many nines in the 18? 18 has two nines. Voila. So this is, this boils down to 112. This boils down to 112. And now it's much easy. It, now it's easier, much easier or easier, not much easier. But now it's easier to actually figure out the common denominator, uh, to have the common denominator. Let's multiply this guy by 10. And let's multiply this. So that makes it 12 times 10, which is 120. How do, we, how do we convert 20 into 120? By multiplying it by 6. So 20 times 6 is 120. And 3 times 6 is 18. We go from 18 over 120 to 10 over 120. Voila. We go from 18 over 120 to 10 over 120. So now the question is very straightforward. What is the drop if you go from 18 to 20? What is the percentage drop if you go from 18 to 10? That's what happened here. We went from 18 to 10. The change is 8. 8 is what percent of 18? That's what we're basically asking. 8 is what percent of 18? Which is same as 8. Is means equal. What is your unknown? Percent means over 100. Of means times. And 18. We just have to simplify, we just have to solve this equation for x. Let's do it. Let's do it on the top. We're going to solve this equation for x. Multiply both sides by 100. Multiply both sides by 100. So we can get rid of this 100. So we have 18x equals. 100 times 8, and therefore x equals 100 times 8 over 18. Now because of the fact that they're looking for approximate change, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're not going to waste our time. We're going to look for approximate change. I'm going to pretend that this is 20. Had it been 20, there are 5 20s in 100. So 5 times, five times 8 is 40. So we're looking for an answer choice that's going to... So now, again, you see, 
it's okay to approximate not only in the problem where they use the word approximate but even when they don't use the word approximate even then you can take liberties and you can approximate things to save time to save yourself time it's perfectly okay to do that as long as there's a condition that you have to fulfill as long as you are fully cognizant fully aware of whether you are overestimating or underestimating you must always know that whenever whenever you approximate you must be always aware of whether you are overestimating or underestimating because that's how you're going to locate the right answer so here by pretending that this 18 is 20 are we overestimating or underestimating had it been had it been 20 this answer would have been 40% but because it's 18 because the denominator is lower the entire fraction is a little bit higher so it's a little over 40 percent the correct answer is 40 plus percent and of course if you look at the answer choices there anything that comes to anything that comes to something little over 40 is C the answer is C that's all that's all there is another way we could have done it now I'm going to do it one more uh, one more way which is going to be a little bit more accurate I'm going to redo this one but instead of being instead of taking so much liberties I'm going to do it a little bit better watch what happens this is 100 times 8 over 18. Okay, watch what happens. This time I'm going to divide top and bottom by 3. How many 3's in 18? 18 has 6 3's. How many 3's in 100? I'm going to pretend that 100 is 99. So now we are approximating. We are underestimating because this is not 99, this is 100. We are underestimating but just slightly. So if it's 99, how many 3's in 99? There are 33 3's in a 99. Let's go one more time. Divide top and bottom by 3 one more time. It becomes 11 and this becomes 2. Okay, watch what happens. Let's go one more time. Divide top and bottom by 2. So get rid of 2. If we divide top and bottom by 2, 8 becomes 4. Voila. So now, x equals, x equals approximately 11 times 4 or 44%. And now, our answer is pretty damn close to what they're showing, which is 45%. The answer is C. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.